All right, welcome to Platform Killer Devlog number five. Now, I forget if number four was ever publicly uploaded because it did kind of go on for 30 minutes in that one. A bit of uh, talking about game design philosophy of what I'm going for in this one, as well as also future features I want to add. So forgive me if I retried on some material because of the fact that, you know, I forget if or if not I uploaded all my ramblings. But this time around, though, we will not talk about all the philosophical or kind of like just the deeper dive information in this one. This will just be strictly on what I am pretty sure um, I, I, I haven't updated everybody on and then what I know for a fact I haven't updated everybody on. Also today we are working with a built-in microphone experience because I'm working off of my bed in my comfortable bedroom uh, because here's the thing, okay? So when it comes to programming, uh, it, it it's much more comfortable to be doing this off of a laptop in your room. However, if you're recording, you know, it, you're definitely not going to have all the things to make you sound nice and all that. But then again, you know, previously I was using just a headset, so you know, who cares about production quality? No one cares. Literally no one cares about what I just said. Okay, so here we go. We have collision masks on. Uh, you know, collision masks look a little bit different this time around because new version of Godot. Yay! Um, so we have the characters that can jump, a wall jump, and they can, you know, they don't interact with every but each other unless if they hit each other. We now have uh, offensive weapons uh, for the hitbox, and if you hit them three times, they are down. Placeholder assets, obviously, for the health and the downs and the lack of down sprite and all that. But um, you know, you have this thing where it's three hits, and then when they're down, uh, you can't hit them again. And also, the when they have the exclamation point, they get knocked back a little bit, but the um, but they don't get another hit. So invincibility frames, basically. Anyway, also, I have made bullets that will knock players back once you at them. As you see here, bullets will also not go through walls, but they will hit players and will also terminate when hitting walls. They will not fly through the walls. They detect the walls and they clear when not doing that. So um, it's worth noting that the way that this is handled is that there is a variable that I toggle on and the weapon number dictates on if the character uses a gun or a sword. Okay, so uh, next we have in here is that we have characters that, it, that we have an enemy. So if a player runs into an enemy, they get knocked back. And if, uh, you know, uh, and uh, the enemies will down players. And uh, the the collision for the enemies, you know, there there is a collision for the the world, but then the the only interactions that the enemies have is with the collision shapes. This is a rebuild off of the previous. Oops, I accidentally did that, and that that's spoiling some things for later. If for later, uh, but anyway, so enemies, I had to redo how I did the the enemy because the first crack at it was a bit wrong, and this crack at it is a bit better. <sighs> I don't know why, but consistently the one thing I have an issue with in Godot is uh, trying to build just simple, basic Goomba style enemies. Every single time I try to build it, it's, it's like it doesn't go right for me. And this is the best attempt I have at it right now. But if I wanted to do one where like the enemy walks off the cliff, you know, there's definitely that. And then also, I for some reason I couldn't get this thing to work with one collision shape. It's look at this. It's um let's actually how do I pan over in, in here? I don't have a middle mouse click. Ah, here we are. Okay. Using trackpad, everybody. But as you see here though, these are let's hide the sprite and boom. We have three different hitboxes, and then the third box is a collision layer thing. Anyway. Um, so basically it's an area of which the player enters the area of the enemy, basically that it, uh, the, the characters interact and they get told to basically be flung and also be heard in the, in the hurt state thing. As you see that there kind of acted a little sus and, um, hmm, that's actually acting wrong. You were working right a second ago. So, hmm.
Okay. Well, uh, it's a little unfortunate that you know that is kind of acting the way it is. Um, we will figure out what is the problem with that, and later offline it was working. At least I was pretty sure the way that the knockback was working was consistently correct. Try and get that right can be a bit hard, but um, as I said, been having troubles with that character that specifically, and uh, I feel like. I feel like an idiot because I feel like that should be one of the easier things to do. But um, regardless, we have this done. Uh, I mean, this working decently well. Anyway, another thing that's worth mentioning is that uh, if the enemy uh, collides with a kill zone, the, the enemy will d disappear in the kill zone. As you see, the enemy drops at the beginning of spawning, but it's not there anymore because the kill zone killed it. Anyway. Uh, also, it's worth mentioning that uh, swords, as well as a bullet, will also kill the enemy. So we have that. Okay, so literally said from the knockback not being correct at one of the directions. Uh, so far, so good. Now, what we need to do is that... Um, uh, because like with it, I have to make sure that the enemy is consistently knocking the player backwards. So yeah, that's why I got to figure out. Um, anyway, what we also have now is that originally the way that I programmed the kill uh, the uh, kill zone is the kill zone is actually what triggers the next level in Platform Killer, and the way that um, the uh, originally how I had that was it was an export variable so somewhere in this way where you could like go do 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 write down the little number for everything in the visual editor instead of the um instead of the you know script here it was just in the visual editor type the different the name of the level uh which these are the levels right there um I've changed this now to be random generation so in kill zones you have here and this is probably again jank ass code but it works is that you now originally this is what gets called upon when you do the new next level now, originally it was just you know yield wait you know 1.5 seconds then get timer next level uh next level i changed next level as a variable entirely from the string export variable to be uh this where um next level becomes these different names for levels uh off of level number and level number is uh dictated from uh the rng because the uh, uh, and you know the rng is called down here and these are the sample numbers within there it's one through four and depending on one through four it will tell level it will get a different level number and depending on the level number you'll get to the next level again maybe there's a less of redundant way of doing it but what ends up being the result is let's see if i can uh figure out the weird glitch okay so there we go we got the glitch in there but now as you see we're in a different level but if you jump into the kill zone, be bop boom, we're in another random level. Oh, look at that. Another level. All right, let's uh, get killed again and then round over. Oh, what? What's that? Another random level. So basically, what the RNG does is that it will keep taking us to different levels. And if I get a big enough sample size of this, you know, for different things, you, we, you'll most likely run into uh games where you'll have a lot of different challenges going on and uh you won't get uh i'm trying to think of the best way to describe it you won't get a, a get as much repeating because as you see here we, we keep on getting this level i don't know which level number this is but we keep on getting this level um so now uh, so if i have like say like you know uh, in the final game, say like it, you you play up till like you know first players who win ten games, well rounds once the whole game it's session, okay. So ten rooms, the session, okay. So if I have fifty levels in there, at maximum you will randomize between twenty. I mean you will have twenty rooms, and while you might repeat a room or two, fifty out of twenty, yeah, that's better better numbers. So now if Platform killers, like if I like it and I develop the game more and more and more, uh, say, you know, you have a sample set of 100 levels to work with, like 100 challenge rooms. You have different 100 unique challenge rooms to work with. Uh, 
these hundred challenge rooms then get randomized and you're only playing the best of basically 10. I mean, well, the first person to get to 10. So yeah, you're not going to be able to see the whole thing. Thus, it's going to keep all the variety in the game. Um, now, when playing the game, I might have to figure out how to bench num bench a number and all that stuff, which I could probably figure out to do that with global variables, as well as also change the probability of like if it's more likely to do one type of challenge or the other. Also, making sure in the option sessions, like, oh, I want to race only. Oh, I want to fight only. Oh, I want to do a mixture. That type of stuff. I'm going to have to figure out in settings later. But, you know, right now I'm trying to build to just get to the next play test, which just is, you know, after I get some more level samples in there, is good enough for the next play test, except eh, maybe I might want to add a couple of things. Obviously, the basic enemy needs to be fixed, <laughs> which is annoying because I found that out while recording. But also, I might want to uh, experiment with some of other, like, obstacles and um, terrain stuff. Like, I want maybe try to do things like spikes or trampolines. You know, basically, things that are not too revolutionary, a platform or gamut things, but are actually, frankly, really easy to add at this point. I, won't, I think I probably should just sit down and add like a variety of those types of things so then I can use them in the level of variety and then make something closer to like, you know, uh, like for the next play test, it doesn't need to be like the full, you know, 50 or 100 that I would want in like a version of the game I'd show the public. Probably I need something closer to, I don't know, like 10. So, uh, yeah, basically good progress, important progress has been made. Anyway, be ba boom. See you later. Uh, peace.